Assalamualaikum and a very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining our Islamic Clinical Pathological Conference session today. I am Dr. Nisa, lecturer for ONG Department, Kuliah of Medicine, will be your MC for today's ICPC. So let's start our program with recitation of Umul Kitab Al Fatiha. Okay, our ICPC today will explore on a topic that has always been a debate, uh, termination of pregnancy, the dilemmas. We are blessed to have two distinguished speakers uh, with us today who will give their talk to make us understand on termination of pregnancy from medical and Islamic point of view, inshallah. Before I introduce our first speaker, I would like to give a short housekeeping announcement. Uh, we will start with two lectures and sharing session, about 45 minutes, each by our experienced speakers. Uh, we will reserve the Q&A session at the end of the program. If you have something to clarify or any burning question, you can type it in the chat box or you can raise your hand to ask the question directly later. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speakers who is known among the medical student. Assistant Prof. Dr. Nila Win, or also known as Dr. Fahmida. She has been working in IIUM as a specialist in ONG since 2019. She completed her diploma in Islamization studies in year 2020. She's going to talk on termination of pregnancy uh, in a uh, medical perspective. Okay, so welcome Dr. Fahmida. You may share your slides. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. May I audit? Am I uh, clearly audible? Yes, yes, Ramida. Can you see the full screen? Yes. The version of my presentation. So, okay. So today our discussion topic will be on the terminations of pregnancy. So when I choose the topic, one of my colleagues say, oh, Pamita, don't choose the topic because it's highly controversial. But I take the challenge. And I admit that I'm not the best person to talk on this topic, but I give my best to explore what we have been practicing all these years, okay? So before we go through the current practices, we have always to look back at what had been, we, are practic we were practicing in the past, okay? So in 1929 to 1967, irrespective of the religion, the abortions or terminations of pregnancy is considered as a criminal act and was punished by imprisonment, fine, or withdrawal of the license to practice the medicine. But from the report, the Russia, Russia is the first country to legalize the abortions to reduce the unsafe abortion and as well as a form of the birth control that occurred in 1920. Okay, but majority of the country they consider as a criminal act. In 1967, scientists have uh, clearly visualized there are cases where the continuations of pregnancy will threaten the life of the mother. Okay, so they amend their act. So, especially by the British Parliament, they say. You can do the terminations of pregnancy if there is a threat to the life of the mother, if pregnancy continue, or a threat to her physical or psychological health. Let me emphasize here, psychological health, or the health of the child of the family. And if the 
the presence of the congenital anomaly in the fetus. Then they say you can do the TOP, but it should be performed in an institution recognized by the Ministry of Health. And in 1980, since 1980, more than 70% of the world populations allow on allow the TOP on demand or with the minor restrictions. There are three categories. Countries allowing abortion on demand, Tunisia is the only Muslim country under this category. Okay. Countries allowing abortion with some restrictions, Turkey. Countries allowing abortion only for strict medical reasons is Malaysia, okay? And all other Muslim countries except Tunisia and Turkey. So this is the abortion act, okay? So in 1967 by the British Parliament. So there are five clauses and which is still applicable. So one, the ONG doctor or medical doctor, whether when we are deciding for the medical terminations of pregnancy, we always refer to this clause. In these clauses, there are five, A, B, C, D, E. A, B, and E, there will be no time limit for gestational age, but C and D clause, they have time limit less than 24 week gestations, okay? So each and every word I highlighted here bear the significant uh, effect. Listen, continuations of the pregnancy would involve risk to the life of a pregnant woman greater than the pregnancy was terminated, meaning that it is life and death matter. Or termination is necessary to prevent grave permanent injury to the physical or mental health of the pregnant woman, okay? So the first clause, the clause A is the life and death matter, mean that mortality, okay? The clause D is morbidity. In the morbidity also is not just the physical, they consider the mental as well, okay? For the pregnant woman. Clause E, there is substantial risk that if the child, the first two clauses they say is for the pregnant woman. Now the clause E, it emphasizes like the child, if the child was born, it would suffer from such physical or mental abnormality as to seriously handicap. Okay, so now who is going to decide the child will be seriously handicapped if the child is, uh, was born or not? So it is medical doctor. It should be certified medical doctor. Okay, and then the to decide whether this is the whether lethal congenital anomaly or uh, non leader congenital malformation, okay? So clause C and D say, pregnancy has not exceeded 24 weeks and continuous of the pregnancy would involve the risk greater than if the pregnancy were terminated or injury to physical or mental health of the pregnant woman. The another clause the same, but of any existing child or family of the pregnant woman. Here, I want you to emphasize the medical abortion and they just not talk about the physical health. They will include also the mental health as well, okay? So, terminations of pregnancy, what did our ethics say? Okay, so medical versus Islamic. So this medical, very clear, this, Abortion ad is based on the Declaration of Jennifer. I will maintain the utmost respect for the human life. Okay, so if, if there is no medical terminations, no medical reason for terminations, don't do it. You don't know how precious is the human life. Okay, so imagine. Okay, later I will talk to you. No, no. The health and well-being of the well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. Here, the well-being it means the physical well-being as well as the mental well-being. Okay, I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient, and I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. Okay, so this. This is very clear and there is no argument about this. Okay, so let's say you as a Muslim doctor and when you reach to a non-Muslim country where the, they allow the TOP on demand, so what will you do? 
Okay. If a physician considers that his convictions do not allow him to advise or perform an abortion, he may withdraw while ensuring the continuity of the medical care by a, uh, by a qualified colleague. So you say, from your religious belief, you cannot do it. She can go to another, she can see another doctor. But uh, you should not be promoting that at now. Nah? Okay, so from the Islam, okay, there are many verses in the Quran which emphasizes not to kill a life. Okay, whoever take a life will be as if they kill the, all of the humanity. Do not kill your children for the fear of puberty or poverty. And do not kill your children for fear of poverty. So in Muslims, we are very clear. Muslim people, they say abortion is considered the unlawful and a major sin, haram in Islam, regardless of the stage of the pregnancy. So what about those women, okay, we will have the major medical comorbidity like uh, Alzheimer's syndrome, uh, severe mitral stenosis, uh, upon the cancer in pregnancy, okay, where they need to seek the treatment, okay. So for those women, okay, there are some uh, Muslim scholars quoted some uh, a few verses from the Quran. Okay, no soul shall have imposed upon it a duty, but to the extent of its capacity. Neither shall a mother be made to suffer harm on account of a child. Or another verse is not placed upon you a religion that causes you difficulty. Okay, so for that, the Muslim Council. National Fatwa Council, okay, they come with the fatwa. Abortion of the fetus is before the 120 day is harus. If the fetus is deformed and diseased, that can endanger the life of the mother. Okay, abortion of a fetus that has been aged 120 days or more is haram because abortion is considered a crime against the fetus which the spirit has blown, okay? Here, I write with a different form color. If the fetus is deformed and diseased, and this deformed and diseased can endanger the life of the mother, then you can do the terminations of pregnancy before 120 days, okay? Let's see. The abortion of the fetus, okay, after 20, 120 days, if it is not endangering the life of the mother, it is haram, okay, regardless of the fetal condition, fetus survive the fetus, uh, able to survive after delivery, case. okay. So why they say here, one, 120 days? Actually, this 120 days means that the day for ensoulment. We all know that we have been created in seven stages, okay? So, in a uh, verse in the Surah al muminim man, we did create you from the clay. Actually, this verse has been um, studied extensively by the scientists, especially the medical scientists, okay? So, we don't know the exact mechanism how we were created. Okay, now they say we are created from the clay, meaning that it, 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 the clay, they, they interpret it as the, uh, the natural vitamins, okay, mineral, or the resources we consume, okay, as the plant or as the nutrient we consume. So scientists nowadays, they are exploring on the preconception nutrition, okay. And the second stage is then we place him in a drop of sperm or nutfa. Actually, uh, a drop of sperm, now today the scientists, they are saying it is not just the sperm. It is It refers to the zygote. You know, from the medical uh, fertilizations, to form the zygote, you need the ovum and as well as the sperm. Okay, not just the sperm. So the nutfa is uh, more preferred, probably it means the zygote, not the sperm. Okay, in a place, roughly, 
rest firmly face mean that it is the, your uh, mother womb or uterus. Okay, then we make the sperm into a or congee blood. This congee blood is actually some scientists say it is a form of like a leech. Okay, so in this photo you will see this there is a leech. Okay, and then the the developing embryo, it has the physical resemblance to the lynch, not only the physical resemblance, it also have the function pun sama juga, macam more or less the same. Okay, leech, what it will do, it will suck the blood. Okay, so the developing embryo, they implant in the uterus and they cut the blood supply from the mother. Okay, so in that sense, they compare the developing embryos to the leech. Okay, and then of a cup, we make the fetal lamb mudka. Okay, the fetal lamb refer to, it's like a uh, true substance. Okay, it's one is like something like, for example, you chew gum. Okay, and then the you, you look at the, your chew gum. Okay, you will see your teeth mark. Okay, so the teeth mark, the true gum or true substance appearance is look like a fetus with the somite development. Okay, so you can see here the somite development. That's why there is a physical resemblance to a true gum. Okay, and then we make all of the lamp bones and close the cover with the flesh. And then we develop or eat another creature, being that this is the period of ensoulment. Okay, now I will tell you. Next week, I know, especially the year five medical students, you have your end of block exam. Okay, by this time you will be so stressful. Okay, and then because you need to overcome one difficulty over another. Whenever you are overcoming the difficulty in your life, remember you have survived the most difficult situations in your life. How? Okay, let me tell you. Your mother, your mother has the thousands of ovarian follicle. Among the thousand, only 400 ovarian follicle able to enter into the ovulation cycle. Okay, uh, ovulation cycle and then they among the 400, only a few get chance to be fertilized, okay? And you are among the few, okay? From your father's side, you have to compete with millions of sperm, okay, to fertilize the ova. Let's see, you get the chance to fertilize the ova. Now you become the zygote, okay, in the angular or the floppy and tube. So from the floppy and tubes, you have to travel to the uterus okay and then to and uh, to implant in the endometria okay so when you travel to the endometrium and then you try to implant into into the endometrium most of the cycle ended in miscarriage okay it's scientifically proven okay so about 40 to 60 percent ended in miscarriage okay so we call it the biochemical miscarriage okay because biochemical miscarriage means that the woman initially jupiti positive and then but once she go to check there is no signs of the pregnancy and later she had the pv uh, vagina bleeding followed by upt subsequently the upt become negative okay so we call it biochemical pregnancy loss which caused it to 40 to 60 percent of the all pregnancy losses okay let's say you implanted okay you successfully implanted in the endometria you still have 10 percent chance of having clinical miscarriage okay okay so the life rate is meaning uh it's like a miracle okay so among the miscarriage cycle you are blessed with an opportunity to survive in the womb okay so you yourself is a miracle okay and then there is a another uh I had say he created you in the womb of your mother in stages. In stages mean the seven stages, one development after another. One development after another is the uh, in another hadith the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam say we had uh, we were created in the phases. Okay, the first forty days, second forty day, and then the third forty day. Okay, and then 
we are covered in three layers of the darkness. So scientists, with our limited knowledge, the three layers of darkness, we comprehend is like the anterior abdominal wall, the uterine wall, and then the chorioamniotic membrane. So in the initial days, scientists start to debate the ensemble, whether it is 120 days or the 40 days. Okay, so there is one hadith saying that the creation of each of one, each one of you is collected in the womb of your mother in 40 days. And something that claims he become for 40 days and then he became the true lamb for 40 days. So 40, 40, 40 in combination, some, when you sum up, it become 120 days. Then, then they say the angel is sent to him and then the spirit is read into it. So that defines a period of ensoulment. So exactly 40, 40, 40 days is equal to 120 days. This 120 days is calculated from the uh, time of the conception, not from the LMB. Time of the fertilization, 120 days. Okay, so one the Islamic scholar are saying about 120 days, our medical scholars see what happened in 120 days it is the time where the quickening occurred okay so it is a 17 week from the conceptions if you calculate from the lmb remember it is 19 week okay not the 120 day so we have our uh, four school of thought that especially in the sunni okay so majority of the scholar from the hanafi and the shafi school of thought they believe 120 day and there is another hadith saying that when the notfall enter the womb and stay there for 42 nights, God sent an angel to give it a form and create his hearing, sight, and skin, bone, and flesh. Then the angels are, oh God, is it a boy or girl? And then the God determines whatever he desired. Okay, so based on this, some scholars say, no, and so men occur in 40 days. Okay, so let's quickly go back and look at what happened in the, the um, uh, developing the embryo at the 40 days. Okay, fetal heart sound that become audible. Okay, uh, exactly it is a seven week from the conceptions. Okay, so that is uh, that's why some scholars say the ensemble occur in the 40 day. Okay, now when they said two different opinions, one group say it is 120 days, one group say 40 days. So which school of thought is correct? Actually, both are correct. Okay, because if you see the development, the fetal development, by 40 days, the usually, yeah, the uh, period of organogenesis, okay, so usually start at the fourth week of the gestation, some by eight week of the gestation, seven to eight week of gestation. So by 40 days, all the organs formation are already completed, but the maturity is not there yet. Okay, the, the liver bed, the pancreatic bed, the heart, the brain, already the other, but it's like um, differentiation and then the maturity have not come into it yet. Okay, so the by 40 days, with the heart tone the audible, and then there is the formation of the brain stem that completed. Okay, but the function is not yet. But, you know, the, uh, the, uh, Sinuses in, uh, in the cerebral cortex, they are not fully mature yet. And then the connections between the upper motor neuron and your lower motor neuron are also so weak that time by 40 days. So it takes time slowly, slowly they get mature and then they, they, they have their synchronized movement. Okay, your neuromuscular system that uh, fully developed and then you start moving. Okay, so quickening. Okay, so the quickening, the full maturity and quickening will start by 120 days. Okay, so both are correct. Okay, both parties are correct. The hadith of the 42 days refer to the development and functioning of the brainstem. The hadith of the 120 days speak about the higher center and their control over the lower one in the central nervous system. 
Okay, so the finally we come to the, the conclusions. Okay, so um, IIFC International Islamic Peace Council they come to the conclusions to take one hundred and twenty days as the kind of point for the day of ensoulment. So based on their decisions, they say okay. Let's say for example, in case of the fetal anomaly. Okay, so they decide the 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 rule based on the one hundred and twenty day. Okay, so this fetal anomaly. Okay, this fetal anomaly. You know, in medicine, the face there are some fetal anomaly which are incompatible with like we call it little congenital fetal anomaly. There are some fetal anomaly which are compatible with life. Okay, so little and non little. Okay, so another thing you have to focus the thing we consider as the lethal anomaly or lethal fetal diseases 10 to 20 years ago is curable now a day because of our advances in the fetal medicine okay diagnosis from bully treatment from bully some even do the intrauterine treatment intrauterine blood transfusion okay, so as a medical doctor you have to continuously update your medical knowledge to decide whether this is the lethal condition by current practices or non-lethal condition by current practices okay another thing is okay Always, always confirm your diagnosis before you decide. When I was a houseman in Myanmar, okay, uh, I have been uh, 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 attached to the ONG ward, okay, ONG labor room. There is a pregnant woman come in labor, okay, already in the advanced labor, okay. When we see her antenatal bow, she was uh, diagnosed to carry a fetus with little congenital anomaly. And then the even the consulting doctor writing there, even if the fetus die, it will surely, uh, fetus, sorry, even if the fetus is born, it will surely pass away within a few minutes of life, okay? So she came in advanced labor. So I consult with my specialist and we inform the pediatric team. So the pediatric team also say, okay, we will stand by, but do not resuscitate like if there is a severe either congenital anomaly and everything. And then the, she progressed to the second stage and we conduct the delivery. And surprisingly, the baby come out totally normal. Okay, initially her consulting doctor was advising her for terminations of pregnancy in view of the congenital fetal anomaly. But the fetals come up normal. The baby has been admitted to the SEN for observation and further evaluation. But I follow her, it's okay, it's normal fetus. Okay, so what if the consulting doctor decide to do TOP and it is a normal fetus, not the anomalous fetus? Okay, so always be careful before you decide, you need to confirm the diagnosis first. Okay, so the fatwa by Saudi Arabia say abortion on the fetus, uh, this is, uh, we are talking about the lethal congenital anomaly, yeah? not the non lethal congenital anomaly. This is abortion of the fetus at any stage of the pregnancy is permissible if the entire trend was confirmed. There is no argument. Okay, understood. Abortion of the malformed fetus before 120 days or prior to ensoulment is permissible if it is certain that the fetus will die following birth or if it has a severe incurable disability. Abortion of the malformed fetus after 120 days of the conceptions it's permissible if the pregnancy is certain to cause the death of the mother. Mean that if it is not endangering the life of the mother, it is not permissible. You should be carrying the fetus. Okay, after one hundred and twenty days, and they say abortion shall not be permissible under any circumstances without a medical report from the specialist. Okay. 
following the written informed consent of the both parents or the mother alone if the pregnancy and continuous was affecting or it will affect her health. Okay. So the Okay, so what about the lethal fetal anomaly diagnosed after 120 days? So, kalau you say 120 days, it is approximately 17 weeks from the day of conception or 19 weeks from your LMB. So, let's say 19 weeks, okay, from the LMB. You know, we do the DT scan around like uh, 18 to 20 week gestations. Okay, if it is major congenital anomaly, you can even see from the first trimester scan. Okay, you can decide for term terminations of pregnancy in the first trimester. There is no argument. But sometimes the opportunity is missed and the woman come for the DT scan in the second trimester, usually around 18 to 20 week gestation, which is very close to your 19 week. Okay. So so let's say you have already detected congenital anomaly around 19 week gestations and then you have to refer to the MFM to confirm and the MFM has to do a few investigations to confirm whether this is compatible with life or non-compatible with life. So it takes time. So usually when you are doing all the procedure, it will pass your 120 days. Okay, so by the time the diagnosis is established, it's already non permissible death. So now the side is probed into this case. So is it shall, shall we do the terminations of pregnancy for legal congenital malformations? Okay, after 120 days. Okay, so the concept is why they allow to do the TOP before 120 days. Okay, they say fetuses that are incompatible with life at birth are a wasteful and futile effort of the mother. If they apply the same the concept, this concept, this concept is applicable even after 120 days. Okay, it does not mean that only the congenital anomaly, deeper, deeper, it will become a good condition after 120 days. So even if she continued to carry the fetus, it is still a wasteful and futile effort. Okay, and this, um, these assumptions, okay, uh, is made uh, based on the instant in diagnosing the presence of the fetal anomaly. That, that, that this should be totally out of the questions, you know. Now we have the um, uh, availability of the ultrasound and we have the non-invasive and as well as the uh, invasive uh, diagnostic test to determine the chromosoma, severe chromosoma anomaly and congenital anomaly, okay? So we can already say that whether this is a legal or non-legal congenital anomaly. And the thing is, the major debate is here. Use of the scarce health resources such as hospital bed and care that may be better utilized on infant and children with better chances of survival or normal life. And continuation of, of the pregnancy leading to the psychological trauma. Nobody talked about that. Now the previous uh, fatwa is emphasizing on the life and death matter. Nobody talk about, uh, about the psychological trauma. So what about the psychological trauma the woman she has? Okay, pain and medical problems. Sometimes, not sometimes, even myself have witnessed a case. Okay, so there is a pregnant woman. Okay, she has a congenital anomaly fetus. Okay, she carry it to the term. Okay, we allow him, her to post it. Uh, even after post day, like day seven, she have not uh, delivered yet. She already passed the day seven, so she has been admitted to the hospital, induced her labor with the prostaglandin, subsequently augmented in the labor room. So we augment her labor for 14 hours, and plus jam, the labor room, she has been receiving the oxytocin. Guess what? She has secondary arrest. Because remember, for the vaginal delivery, fetus is the passenger. Fetus has to follow the normal mechanism of labor to pass through the bath kernel. Now, there, 
No, the fetus is the congenital anomaly fetus, especially if it's a cranial, or uh, sorry, uh, central nervous system. They cannot follow the normal mechanism of labor. So those kind of fetuses, they will usually have the abnormal progress of labor. Okay, so the case I mentioned, she has the secondary arrest. Okay, so finally, uh, it was decided for her to have the emergency LSES for secondary arrest after 14 hours in labor. Okay, so the thing is, um, if you do the fetus survive good, after doing the seizure, fetus will not survive. Okay, fetus pass away after a few days of delivery. What about the mother? And then the consequences in a future pregnancy. Okay, so she has risk of the uh, having the scar dehiscen or uterine rupture. Okay, in her future vaginal delivery, or she has risk of having the low lying placenta or placenta previa, or sometimes she may have the cesarean scar pregnancy or placenta accreta. So we are giving risk to the mother. Okay, so that is the debate about the fetal congenital anomaly. So what about the rape case? Okay, so this one, I, this photo is published in the Malaysian CPG guideline 2022. Abortion of the fetuses is aged before 120 days is harus. Harus, if the fetus is deformed and a severe disease that can endanger the life of the mother. Okay, it is harm to abort the older fetus more than 120 days because the abortion is considered as a crime of murder on the fetus that has been spirited, except the abortion for saving the life of the mother. This fatwa not emphasizing the psychological or mental well being of the pregnant woman. So there is a case come out. Sarah? Terminations of pregnancy for a Muslim rape victim and dilemma in Malaysian setting. There's a case, okay, where the 17-year-old girl was cancer, okay, and she get pregnant, a seven-week pregnancy. The fetus condition is good, and there is nothing med medical co uh, comorbidity, okay? But she requested for the uh, TOP on the ground of her mental um, uh, health. Okay, so this is psychiatry assessment. They already did it, and then she has a major depressive disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. So the medical team they agreed to terminate the pregnancy. Okay, but from the fatwa published. Okay, so there is no black and white, no clear, not clearly saying, oh, this is permissible or not. Okay, this is happening in 2012 in Malaysia. Whereas in 2000, around 2004 to 2007, so Egyptian scholar already support the uh, terminations of pregnancy in the case of the ray. Okay, if it uh, it's affecting the psychological or the mental well-being of the woman or her family member. This is in Egypt. Okay, so now visiting those conflicts. Okay, so our conclusion is okay. Now we have to give a deeper thought. We cannot accept whatever what has been told to us. Okay. Valuable flexibility can be used for extending the permitted indications for abortions. Okay, not just the life and death of the mother or life and death of the fetus. Okay, before the four months to some other problematic topics. The, pri the priority for saving the life of the mother when there is an equal risk for the mother and fetus, or even when the fetus is at greater risk, after instrument can be referred to the jurisprudential authority for more assessment and decisions making. For that, Australian National Iman Council come out with this fatwa in 2019. Okay, Islam considered the permissibility of the abortion in the following circumstances. 
to my humble opinion, this is the most understandable and this is the most practical fatwa. Abortion is permissible at any stage of the pregnancy, even after 120 days. If the pregnancy poses any exceeding danger to the mother, this any being not just the physical or mental health one included juga. And this any cannot be decided by any everybody. Okay, it should be by the medical doctor. This must be confirmed by a qualified and trustworthy medical report. Such threats include the life of the mother begin at the serious uh, risk. Abortion before 120 days of conception is treated on a case-by-case -case basis. Previously, they are talking about life and death, life and death. No, even if it is not immediately threatening your life, you have to consider case-by-case -case basis with the previous rule cap in mind. Such cases is the permissibility if the mother health is in danger or if the fetus is assuming to have abnormality that is legal or will cause the severe disability. Okay, now how do we conduct the terminations of pregnancy? These terminations of pregnancy, I'm not talking about for the social or TOP on demand. This is for medical reason. Okay, you have to re-evaluate the patient. Remember, throughout your evaluation, process non-judgmental don't judge the patient whatever happened in her life okay you are in no position to judge another person okay focus on the patient's needs these needs not just the physical needs it's the psychological needs as well show empathy and respect provide access to the social services if necessary okay history when you Take the history full clocking and you shall be uh, you should be doing all the uh, full clocking okay for including her medical okay and then the past surgical history in order to decide the method for terminations of the procedure so in history we will determine the indication indication why you want to do this top okay or any control indication for medical or surgical top procedure risk factor comorbidity sexual and domestic violence abuse okay in case of the top on request physical examinations on ultrasound basically we will determine the gestational age okay so sometimes if the pregnancy past 12 week gestation you can feel the uterus palpable by abdomen if less than that you cannot see the uterus uh, palpable by abdomen so you have to rely on the ultrasound to determine the gestational age okay and as well as you see the cervical okay the so services are soft or open okay to decide whether you will give a cervical priming or not and the full blood count, especially for the surgical TOP. Okay, so you have to see the hemoglobin level, platelet level, and then the WVC. Okay, the black group, especially the recess black group, because any therapeutic terminations of pregnancy, okay, regardless whether it is medical or surgical, you should be given the roga. Okay, non to the non sensitized recess negative mother from 12 weeks of pregnancy provided within 72 hours of the procedure, okay? And then you can also do the STI screening, but it depends on the case. Now, not all the cases you jump to the gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, okay? Especially if it is like um, severe congenital anomaly, okay? mm -hmm. Not so relevant now. So you have to decide based on the case, okay, whether she has risk factor for STI or not. If she has risk factor, you have to do the screening and treat, okay, and additional investigation depending on the case. Preparation I emphasize informed consent, okay. My medical student, especially the GFI medical students, you know me. Whenever I teach you for any surgical procedure, I em emphasize, I teach you well how to take the informed consent, okay? Patients, how you have to inform the patients about the indication, why you want to do this terminations of pregnancy, and as well as the procedure briefly, not necessarily, okay, I want to put the prostate for the cervical priming, but don't use medical jargon, okay, when you are explaining the patients, okay? 
you should be communicating with the patient in a simple and then the um, simple and clear uh, you should, you should use the simple and clear words and then to make sure the patient understand your explanations, okay? When you are taking the concept, supported with the scientific fact, clinical document, show her evidences, which part is a, a normal legal, okay? And then document and medical examination, which help then be informed about the TOP and its consequences. So the concern from whom you have to take concern, especially from the patient, okay? So for the Muslim, we also include the husband, okay? So if the patient is less than 18 years old, so concern from her parents, okay? If the parents are also not available, you can take concern from the guardian. If guardian also not available, child protector or from the state. Okay, if the patient is unsound mind or mentally challenged, you have to take consent from the parents, guardian, or consulting doctor in the life threatening situation. Remember, the decisions for the termination of pregnancy it should be shared decision. You cannot decide, even though you have the good faith, okay, you're sympathetic, you're empathetic, okay. As a treating doctor, you cannot decide for the patient. It should be shared responsibility, okay? So you have to convince the woman and as well as the husband and family member, and then the decision should be shared, okay? Setting preferably gynecologic specialist support, okay? So you have to do preferably in the hospital, okay? Because if any complications happen, we have facility to treat the complications, okay? Decisions by medical practitioner in Malaysia, according to the Malaysia, two doctors need to certify it, okay? Preferably one specialist, okay? DOP is necessary there and then necessary and that continuation of the pregnancy would involve the risk to the life of the pregnant woman or injury to the mental or physical health, okay? Of the woman greater than if the pregnancy was terminated, okay? So cervical ripening, so you want to, for especially this is for the uh, surgical uh, terminations of pregnancy, you want to do the session and cure touch, okay? So recommended in nulliparous, you know, nulliparous uh, service, they are more firm in consistency, okay? Multiparous is a little bit softer as compared to the nulliparous. So the guidelines he recommended in nulliparous may be used, mean that even if you use or you don't use, it's okay, okay? So pharmacological, you can use the Gamipros or Mesoprostol. We use the Gamipros, one milligram vaginally three hours before the operations, okay? Otherwise, you can also use the osmotic dilator or cervical balloon. Antibiotic prophylaxis for post-abortal infection. Color medical, the guidelines say no need. If surgical, should use. What many, what? Antibody you will use depending on your local hospital protocol, okay? So this is from the RCOG, this is par oral doxycycline, 100 milligram BD for three to seven days, but the study say three days is already affected, okay? But if you wanna continue, consider for the extension some by seven day, no problem, you can do it, okay? Starting within two hours of the procedure. And the contraceptions, remember, I put this contraception under preparation, not after the procedure. You have to start discussing about the contraception, discussing the contraceptions even before the procedure and can start at the time of the TOP. For example, let's say women choose the IUCD, okay? You can just put it after the surgical TOP, no problem, okay? So surgical TOB, no restrictions on the choice, okay? You can use whatever uh, method you want to use. For medical TOB, you can start the med, uh, contraception at the time, uh, not after. Uh, you can even start at the time of the TOB, okay? But the IUCD, okay? Copper, ataupun marina, it can be inserted after expansion of the pregnancy, okay? So tunggu dulu until the uterus is clear of the product or conception, then you put in your IUCD, okay? 
then you counsel the patients, uh, okay? Whether you want to do the, uh, whether you want to choose the medical DOP or surgical DOP, okay? So you have to think about the advantages, disadvantages, and as well as the contraindications, okay? When you inform the patients, inform about the benefits, as well as the risk. Don't just focus on the complications sahaja. Okay, you have to convince the woman why you want to do this DOP for the patient. Okay, this protocol is based on the Malaysian CPG guideline, which is published in 2012. 10 years ago, but still we are practicing this guideline, okay? So medical DOP or surgical DOP, okay? So in Malaysia, mefipristone um, uh, is not readily available. You know what, uh, mefipristone is the anti-progestogen agent, okay? So the, um, the study say if you use the mesoprostol, or let's say you give one group of patients for terminations of pregnancy, you give one group uh, mesoprostol alone. Another group, you use the combination of mefiprostol and mesoprostol. So the study say, if you use the combination, it has a synergistic effect. Reduce the risk, reduce the time induction to abortion interval, less drug side effect, less risk of ongoing pregnancy. So it is preferable to use the methylpristone regime if you have in your hospital. But majority of the hospital in Malaysia, we don't have methylpristone in store. So we rely on the prostaglandin. The, the prostaglandin bone, okay, so previously, okay, in 2012, we still have misoprostol. Now we misoprostol also withdrawn from the market. So we have only the gamipros left, okay? The methotrexate, we don't prefer to use that because of the side effect profile as well. Okay, so let's say if you are in the practicing in the Malaysian hospital, this guideline is still applicable. But let's say, okay, you know there is an issue with the contract doctor, right? So in future, you decide to go out of the country and then that you decide to walk in the uh, foreign country, okay? So they may be practicing the RCOG 2022 guidelines. So uh, more or less the same yoga, okay? No much difference. Later, you can read this in detail. Okay, I will not go to explain about this. After the procedure, remember psychological support. You are not just treating the disease. You are treating the human being as a whole, okay? Her mental health also, you have to take care of. And then give her analgesic and contraceptions, okay? And the NTD and follow-up appointment. And then before discharge, you have to advise when she had to come back to the clinic or the uh, hospital immediately when she had the increasing vaginal bleeding or any signs of infections, or fever, worsening abdominal pain, she should be coming back to the hospital immediately. Okay, so that's all for me. Okay, thank you, Dr. Famida, for the extensive explanation on TOP in medical perspective, uh, including embryology a bit. Okay, so I will reserve the question to the end of the program. Uh, any question, you can uh, type it in the chat box. Okay, we will continue with the second talk by Associate Prof. Dr. Abdul Razak Abdul, ha Abdul Hashi. Uh, he is the head of Center of Islamization, IIUM Kuantan Campus. He obtained his PhD in Usuladin and Comparative Religion in 2008 and has a lot of publication on Islamization and uh, coordinate the Islamization activities. So welcome, Prof. Abdul Razak. Thank you very much. 
Dr. Khairun Nisa. And also thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fahmida as well. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, Prof. Yeah, I, my, my net is, is up and down. So I'm, I'm just worried that maybe my voice is not reaching you there. Oh, uh, it's clear, Prof. Okay, okay. So the MC, speaker of Fahmida, students and staff, to all of you, Salamullah alaikum wa rahmatu wa barakatuh, and good morning. My presentation will not be long because I think the topic is in the right hand. Dr. Fahmida, who is a doctor, a medical doctor, and as well have finished her diploma in Islamic studies, as you mentioned, the MC mentioned. So I, I enjoyed you know, the combination that Dr. Fahmida did for the topic. Look, for, she looked it from a medical perspective, and then also she summarized it, the Islamic you know, input into it. So therefore, I think I will be on time, although now it's already three minutes to nine, but inshallah, I will give it, because most of, I think, my points, which I wanted to share from Islamic perspective has been said by Dr. Fahmida. Well, okay, very quick, I will do, Quick summary, you know, of, of the, you know, Muslim jurists perspective about termination of, you know, pregnancy or growing life. Very quick. There are a number of issues. Eh? There are a number of issues. Can I share my summarize it slide, MC? Yes. Yes, okay. uh, Professor, you okay. can share let, your let slides. Me, okay, let me share with you. I hope you can see my slide. Huh? I hope you can see my slide. Yes. Okay. There are at least four major dimensions. When we talk about TOB or termination of pregnancy, there are four major issues that are always in discussion. Here in this part of the world, or even if you go to you know, other countries outside Malaysia, or you go to anywhere in the world. Number one, the first issue that always comes in mind, and under discussion and up to today, I think is under discussion in the US and somewhere else and also in this part of the world is the issue of the concept of pregnancy and the life choices or the choices of life. The concept of pregnancy, it involves a lot of issues which I think we are not you know, here for you know, to discuss about today. For example, the issue of, uh, you know, let us say, there is ongoing discussion, you know, in the conventional level, you know, about termination of pregnancy, the issue of my body, my choice. That is how they put sometimes, you know, termination of pregnancy is my choice. Why? Because it's my body. Therefore, I own my body, especially for the female, you know, for the ladies, you know, that is the justification that we always see there in the conventional world, right? So, if I want to have, the, this is how they put it. If they want to have pregnancy, I will have it. If I don't want to have it, I don't want to have it. And even if I have it, I can terminate it. That is the argument that you will see for those who are pro, you know, apportioned, right? And then another concept that is involving is the issue of family, you know, family. And the issue of also the philosophical level, you can go even to the level of, you know, whether having children, is actually good or bad, you know, the negativity about life. Then you can talk about, you know, certain religions tell us your life is evil and children are evil and life itself is evil. Therefore having children is evil. You know, you have these philosophical backgrounds that are actually influencing, you know, the, what do you call the activities of TOP. So I think today we are not in the, in, in the position of discussing about these philosophical levels and the concepts, right? Because when we talk about termination of pregnancy, we need to understand also the background, the driving, you know, what do you call motivations, right? And how people understand it. So they connect it to the level of, you know, how you are, it depends on how you see life. You know, you see life as evil, al hayatu kullu hashar, or you see life as a positive thing, therefore ha having children, having life, raising children is something positive. Of course, Islam always look into life as a positive thing. But when you look into other worldviews, 
then you have worldviews that see life as a negative thing. Therefore, having children is a negative. Uh, growing life is negative. Growing population is a negative. So for them, they see everything that goes on in life, their worldview, the conception is, you know, evil. Therefore, termination of, you know, pregnancy for them is one way of reducing this evil. And that liter literature is available. You can check from Google, eh? the way, the conception, right? The worldview of, you know, pregnancy, offspring, childbearing, you know, life growing, populations. There is a whole, you know, discussion going on there, which I think we are not in a position to discuss today, but I just want to share with you. But from Islamic perspective, from Islamic point of view, in Islam, life is good. I put it in that way. It's not evil, but in that way. Life is not evil. Life is positive because it's being created by God and God is good. Therefore, life in itself is good. And having children is good as well. Raising them, taking care of them, managing life. That one is a, is a different issue. But life in itself is not evil in Islam. Maybe we can talk about it in a different topic and in a different discussion. Fine. Now, when also it's connected on, you know, the, they, they call it human right and choices and liberty. And then it's another issue again, my choice, my body. So that is also another discussion. So when we, when we come from that point, then we come to the, now from the conceptual view, the conceptual overview, we come to the stages of, you know, uh, what do you call uh, pregnancy? So before we come to the stages of pregnancy from Islamic perspective in Islam, we look into life, you see, we look into life as a, something that is good, precious, protected, preserved, and therefore it has to be, you know, honored, put in that way, life, regardless of what stage, right? Therefore, one of the basic principles of Islamic, you know, law is to preserve life. Fine. So now comes here. Life is protected, whether it is, you know, a grow up life like we are now, or in the form of fetus, or in the form of growing, you know, child. It doesn't matter the stage of life, whether it's baby, fetus, and, and so forth, right? So because the Quran mentions that life is protected, therefore in Islam, you know, everyone deserves to be protected, including those who are, you know, in, 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 in pregnancy stage or, or the fetus, put in that way. So the question here is, the question comes, when it comes to protecting life, the question is, when can we, you see here, when can we say this is a growing life, therefore it has to be protected? At what stage, when we talk about pregnancy? Stage number, you know, let us say, is it first day, three weeks of pregnancy, four weeks of pregnancy, five weeks of pregnancy, 10 weeks of pregnancy? When can we say this is actually a life which need to be protected? That is the question. That is actually a major question to, you know, to discuss about. And when it comes to stages, of course, as mentioned and quoted by our Dr. Dr. Fahmida, the Quran mentions, you know, a, a number of stages, you know, the Quran mentions in few surahs, you know, the stages of pregnancy and how the formation of the, you know, the baby takes place. Then, then later on, we will see quickly also another issue that is important in TOP is actually when it comes to akhlaq, you know, and ethics and law and, and, and pregnancy, the reasons that can be used or the reason is to terminate growing life. What are the reasons? We need to understand whether they, you know, that life is in the form of growing child or in the form of, you know, normal human being like we, you know, uh, I mean, grown up or born, you know, even the child in the, in the pregnancy is still normal human being, right? So what are the reasons? What are the justifications? You know, what could be a justification for taking life? Of course, when we talk about criminal law, Taking life is justified as long as that life has taken another life, and nafs be nafs, life for life, right? If a life causes the death of another life intentionally and willfully, then Islamic law allows, you know, for eye for eye or, you know, life for life, you know, for criminal, you know, punishment, that life to be taken. But 
a growing life in the pregnancy, in the womb, what are the justifications that are there, you know, to terminate? What could be the justification to, to end that life, you know, or, or to, to let it come to an end, right? Or terminate it or abort it. Then another issue that is always, you know, in mind, and I think our doctor mentioned is pregnancy with deformity, right? Pregnancy with deformities. These are also another issue. So these are actually four major dimensions, which I think, uh, you know, is always, you know, discussed when it comes to TOP. And Dr. Famida touched it, you know, uh, you know, some parts of it. And I just want to complement our discussions. If you, you know, if I move a little bit, I will be quick. You know, these are some ayat, you know, some of the chapters of the Quran, which I summarize it for you. Uh, Prof. Abdul Razak, can you make yes. your slide into a slideshow? A slideshow, okay. Yeah. Can you see now? I will make it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. You're welcome. Thank you. So these are just, you know, some of the verses of the Quran that has explained it. You know, the, what do you call, the stages of, you know, pregnancy. Very, very, very simple. You know, it's like very straightforward. So in this ayat, you will see later on, uh, the Quran has mentioned, you know, different aspects and different stages of the pregnancy. And I think the, Dr. Fahmid also quoted two major hadith, I can say, two major hadith that are explaining also the stages of pregnancy from Islamic perspective. So when you read that, those two hadith mentioned by Dr. Fahmida, and these ayat that I quoted for you, and some other ayat in the Quran, this is what the ulama, this is what the scholars, you know, try to understand. In these hadith, these two hadith, and in these verses, you know, there has been mentioned, you know, two major stages of pregnancy. In both the hadith and the ayat, two major stage, stages of pregnancy. Before nafq ruh the Quran mentions that, nafq ruh prior to insolment, as mentioned by Dr. Fahmida, nafq ruh basically means insolment. And after insolment, or after nafq ruh So when you read the whole Quranic ayat, always the Quran ends with thumma sawahu then the process of the biological formation gets completed. Thumma sawahu, completed, sawa. Then, wa min ruhihi. Then the ruh has been, you know, given or breathed into these, you know, zygote, whatever you call it, eh? these formed biological, you know, entity, right? So the ulama always refer to this ayat and those two hadith in order to decide and give fatwa on this issue, the Muslim scholars. Eh? And when they read this ayat and this hadith, they realize that actually there are two stages, prior in installment and post, you know, in installment life of the baby or, or the growing, you know, vetus, right? So based on this ayat and this hadith, then when it comes to the issue of termination or the issue of permissibility, uh, whether it's permissible to terminate, you know, pregnancy or not to terminate, the whole discussion begins from there. Understanding those hadith and understanding those ayat and also driving two major positions from these hadith and from these ayat, that is qabla nafkh ruh and ba'da nafkh ruh then these are their fatwas, which I want to share with you quickly. I mean, the, the, the positions, eh? their positions, I can say, or, or, or the legal positions, put in that way, you know, the, the, the ulama, Muslim jurists view on the termination of pregnancy based on the hadith and the ayah that I mentioned to you. So there are three major, actually, uh, I, I'm summarizing for you. There are three major uh, issues, I can say, when it comes to this. Termination of pregnancy in general, and then termination of pregnancy, you know, due to, you know, certain conditions. Huh? Later on, you, uh, you will see, you know, termination of pregnancy due to deformity and termination of pregnancy due to rape and, you know, incest or illegal sexual relationship, both in that way, right? So let us see quickly these three, you know, both, you know what do you call issues. Generally, is it permissible? to terminate pregnancy. 
So when that question was forwarded and raised it, the Muslim ulama or the Muslim scholars opinion, you know, uh, put in this, this is the issue that they, you know, raise. They say, well, look, we want to understand why. You see, we want to understand why. So they said, let us say there is a reasonable, you know, how do I say, uh, decision, for example, or, or reason or justification or, 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 or you know, uh, how do I say, ground to take. So they said before, let us put in this way, before the, what do you call, the first 40 days or the before the first 20 days of pregnancy, the opinion here is, there is an opinion that says, well, regardless of whether the installment takes place or not, one is the, what do you call, the pregnancy begins initiated and, and the fertilization of the ovum and the, what do you call, the sperm takes place, then at all, you cannot touch it because it's no longer sperm sahaja, it's no longer ovum sahaja. Now it's a fertilized ovum and needs to be protected and preserved. So one of the opinions says, well, before or after, before, you see now we are talking about before, first day, second day, first week, second week, third week, the first opinion says, well, not permissible at all times, regardless of what, right? Look, unless it is a risk to the mother's life, that is the condition they make. If the pregnancy risks mother's life, then they have a different you know, opinion. They say, well, then now it's okay. Why? Because now we have the life of the mother and the life of the you know, pregnancy. And in this case, we sacrifice, put in that way, the life of the baby and save the life of the, the mother. Because now we are given to choose between two evils. This is the ethical position, huh? two, two evils. The evil of taking the life of the baby and the evil of, you know, causing harm to the life of the mother. So in that case, we choose the lesser harm. It's not because we are now don't care the baby. No, because we have two evils. So we have to choose, you know, the rura here. We have to choose the lesser one. But other than that, all cases, regardless of what, you know, you cannot take the life of the, what do you call, you cannot terminate the pregnancy. But the second opinion says, well, if the justifications are provided, then you can, it's permissible before 40 days or before 120 days. Because as you mentioned, Dr. Fahmida, there are two ahadith and one of them says 140, 120. The, had, the other hadith you know, mentions 40 days. So, well, now, now we take the minimum, right? So permissible before 40 days, all right? Okay, now, when it comes to termination of pregnancy after 40 or 120 days of pregnancy, there is a consensus among the Muslim jurists. There is a consensus that says, well, you know, it's prohibited. They say it's prohibited to terminate pregnancy after 120 days, unless, you see here always that condition is there, unless that is a risk to the life of the mother. So, so why? Because for them, they assume that nafq or insolvent means this is already being humanized, characterized. You know, the, the characteristics of the human fe features are already there. Therefore, like any other human life, it has to be protected. So there is no justification for termination after 120 days, right? Okay. Now another question comes, what happens if, as mentioned Dr. Fahmi, what happens if, you know, these uh, vetas have some deformity, for example, huh? mushawah, al janin al mushawah, that's how they normally, uh, you know, the wording, you know, that they use the fuqaha in Arabic language. So again, coming to the same issue, is it, the question is, is it, can we know that this baby is going to be born with deformity? before 120 days, can we discover that? Can the medical doctors observe that? Can they say that for sure, this baby is going to be born with this deformity and, you know, what do you call, uh, you know, difficult 
or, or deformity or deformation, tashawuh, al-khilqa, right? So if yes, then now here comes again to the same point. So termination of pregnancy due to deformity before 40 or before 100 days of pregnancy. So here comes permissibility as long as it is before 40 days, but with certain conditions, certain conditions as mentioned by Dr. You know, Fahmida, a medical committee, right assessment, conformed by medical, you know, what do you call team, expertise, they have some conditions they, they you know, they, they, they impose, right? The other opinion says no, no, deformity is not actually, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, what do you call, acceptable for, you know, aborting the baby, because who knows? Maybe we discover this baby is going to be born with this deformity, let us say before 140 days, 20 days, but who knows, maybe in two, three months later, this deformity may, I don't know how, but they said may, you know, reform, it may become, you know, what do you call, uh, get away and then the baby's life and, you know, gain power. I don't, they, they have, they have their own. So they say this deformity may get away, you know, somewhere, or even, you know, they, they put in this way. Let us say, if we say that this baby is going to be born with this deformity, uh, does that mean they say anyone who is alive now with deformity, we can kill or we can take their life? Then the answer is, of course, no. Anyone with a disability now, we cannot say, oh, you have a disability, therefore we can take your life. It's more like euthanasia, right? So since we cannot take the life of those who are with deformity now, similarly goes to the baby according to them. So the baby or the, I mean, the, 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 the virtus, the virtus life is protected. But if we discover that there is a deformity there, we cannot justify and say, okay, now we can apport you. Why? Because you have deformity. So they say, no, that is synonym or tantamount to saying that those who are disability, who have disability now, their life can be, you know, taken, which is not acceptable legally and ethically, right? So the second opinion of the ulama, they say, regardless of what, whether 100, before 120 days or before 40 days or after, there is no justification. I mean, deformity is not a justification to terminate the life of the baby. I mean, the growing uh, pregnancy. Okay, what about termination of pregnancy due to deformity after 40 or after 100 days of pregnancy? That one, I think, yeah, as, as also Dr. Fahmida quoted, there is a consensus among the ulama that says, well, you know, after 140 days, 20 days, let us say, or 40 days of the pregnancy, there is no justification of taking life due to, I mean, to terminate the baby, uh, the growing pregnancy due to deformity, right? Okay, now we come another issue. What about if this pregnancy is due to adultery or fornication or zina, for example, or maybe rape, you know, all forms of, you know, adultery or fornication or incest, for example, right? So then again, the issue of 40 days and 100 days come in to the picture. They say, well, termination of pregnancy due to adultery or fornication or due to rape and incest, they say before 40 days or before 120 days. The first opinion of the ulama says not permissible in all times. In all cases, that is the message. In all cases, all times here basically means lady was raped, with, let us say, and then she become pregnant, or it was, you know, uh, her will to have, uh, for example, illegal sexual relationship with someone, and then she become pregnant. So regardless of willful or forcefully, you know, al-ikrah wa rida they say, in all cases, one is the baby, I mean, when the pregnancy begins, when is the pregnancy begins, there is no justification of termination due to, you know, I was forced or I was raped or this is due to adultery and so forth, right? Because for them, they say that adultery and rape, and how do I say, let us say incest, these are what, or illegal sexual relationship or unwanted pregnancy. That is something that is different from the life of the baby. The life of the baby is a life which needs to be protected. So it has to be protected regardless of what. Who committed what sin? Who committed what crime? Let us say adultery, rape, 
let the law deals with them individually because they committed rape therefore they have to be banished according to the law but because there is someone who raped someone we cannot decide someone's life to be taken the growing life so the baby's perspective yeah? the baby you know life from baby perspective is oh saya pun i am also i also want to be alive that is the baby's perspective and has to be protected and has to be preserved that is the message from you know so therefore the ulama said regardless of whether it's due to rape or due to willful you know sexual illegal sexual relationship it has nothing to do with taking it cannot justify taking the baby's life or the growing i mean life to be terminated therefore not permissible in all cases let the law deal with those who have committed the the, the, the sin and let this life grow and born that is the one opinion the other opinion the second opinion says say wait a minute depends i think that dr fahmid also indicated this depends do you to rate then it is permissible before 40 days or 100 days again depends right so depends here they mean if it was willfully this lady wanted to have a illegal sexual relationship with someone and then she become pregnant and then now she want to terminate the what do you call the pregnancy they say no nothing justifies that one cannot before 140 days and after 140 days but let us say if this lady was forced or raped against her will and that may also you know uh, cause of course the rape you know cause trauma you know difficult and, and later on when she become pregnant she will get worse and mental you know problem problems and so forth therefore in this case they say before 140 days yes this is one opinion one group of the scholars so now the second opinion at least classifies the first opinion they generalize they say no when is pregnancy is initiated protect it preserve it regardless of rape or willful the second group of the you know you have to be fair if this person was forced and raped then before 140 days she is allowed to terminate the, the pregnancy but after 140 days still she cannot even though that pregnancy is due to rape right okay the third group they say no no actually guys you have to be fair if let us say this child is as a result of what do you call uh, zina or illegal sexual relationship you know regardless of Prof Abdurraza you have to unmute. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Can you see my slide? Uh no, you need to share it again. Oh, I don't know what happened. Eh? All of a sudden I my my net, you know, my my internet become Okay. Okay, can you see it now? Uh not yet, Prof. Okay. I don't know the Yes, I think okay. now it's coming, right? Yes. 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 So, yeah. So the, the the conclusion actually this is the last slide and this is my conclusion. The conclusion finally is termination of pregnancy due to adulterated and fornication before 40 and 100 days, you know, pregnant okay actually this the last point is actually i wanted to say after not not before not before the last point allow me to correct you here after yeah sorry okay so basically 
he basically opinion about you know TOB and the different justifications and the different reasons as you can see. So it's just a complementing for what Dr. Famida already summarized it. And that is it from my side. I'm ready to listen to your comments and contributions as well. I will share this summary to your, you know, I mean, to the organizer of the program. And just to share with you, for those who want to, you know, read more, I would advise, how would I say now this one? Okay, how to, how to, okay. I'll, I'll just, I'll just, you know, for those, there, there is a very useful book written and published by IIU Empress, although it's in Arabic. This is a summary, you know, written by one of our professor from Usul Fiqh, Fiqh and Usul Fiqh, the Department of IRK, who summarizes it actually the whole discussion. Sorry for the technical issues, Prof. Abdurraza. I think the line is not stable. Not stable. So place. back to you. Back to you. I finished my discussion. So that. But is but your point. your just now you said about the book. You, we we didn't hear about it actually. Oh yes, there is a book, useful book actually, published by IIA Press, although it's in Arabic. Written by one of our professors, Prof. Arif Al Arif, uh, professor of Fiqh and Usul Al Fiqh contemporary issues. So he summarized actually the legislations, the debates, the theories, the opinions, uh, Muslim scholars, schools about, you know, TOP. So, uh, you know, and it's published in IIUM Press and, and, and sold there. And I found one copy already from there. Uh, I advise the students to get that book. I'm sure even, you know, we can translate it. It's actually a summary of worldwide and Muslim world and specifically more like medical applications and practices of these issues. So uh, this, this the summary that I share with you is from his book because he make it, you, you know, how do I say, uh, what do you call, uh, ready for us. So back to you, back to you. Okay, okay thank you very much, Prabhupada Razak, for the enlightening talk. Actually, your last slide summarize and um, Summarize and answer all query on TOP in Islamic perspective. Okay, okay Thank now, you. Thank uh, you. yeah. Thank you. Okay, now we will continue with the Q and A session. Uh, so if you have any question, you can type it in the chat box. Uh, um, there are a few questions actually from the participants. A few already answered by Dr. Famida, but I think. Uh, I will bring in up a few so that everybody can um, aware can aware about the answer. Okay, so first I would like to ask Dr. Famida, okay, from the participant about the question on correlation between is there any correlation between ensolment that occurs at 120 days or 16 weeks with quickening, which also occurs around the same time. Dr. Famida? Assalamu alaikum. Can you see my sharing screen? Uh, yes, Dr. Famida, we can okay. see it. So the Correlation, actually, this is not from any scientific paper. This is from my understanding. I tabulate it. So from the hadith, it's divided into 40 days, the second 40 day and third 40 days. Okay, 40 day, 40 day, 40 days. So all together is 120 days. So I try to correlate with the, our medical knowledge based on the embryology. Okay, so day two, the first 40 day. So it starts from the zygote. 
okay zygote and then the about the week since the all the organs most of the organs are already formed by the beginning of the next 40 day week seven or week six or week seven you can hear the fetal you can see the fetal heart not hear you can sorry not see you can hear the fetal heart tone already so the hadi, the second hadi I show you is the uh, they say the ensuement occur in the uh, in forty day is based on this because they take they believe that when the fetal heart tone can be audible the fetus is already ensued. Another hadi they say by one hundred and twenty day because of the this fetal quickening. Because the to for the fetus to move, your upper motor neuron and then the, your nervous system and then the, your muscle muscular system, everything must be synchronized for the fetus to move. So the now the scientific evidence they prove that by day forty, the nervous system development is already there, but it's not mature yet. So the maturity comes slowly, slowly, and it is usually around 140, 120 days the maturity occur. So in the chat box, I need to stop sharing. In the chat box, I have shared um, the quotations from the the the. Dr. Koren presented a paper at the conference on the ethics of organ transplantation in Canada, where he said that sinuses between the higher center of the cerebrum and then the lower centers do not start to walk before the beginning of the 20th week of the pregnancy, computed from the LMP, so which is equivalent to 100. 20 days computed from the moment of the conception's fertilization. So this is the major reason why most scholars agree and so meant to be occur around 120 days. I hope I answer your query. But nobody know the truth. Okay, thank you Dr. Famida. Um, okay, the next question, I just want to brought uh, this question from the chat box. Okay, Dr. Famida, may I know uh, if someone had recurrent second trimester miscarriage, secondary to complete septic uterus and have conceived spontaneously recently, is that possible until what trimester that the fetus would be viable? If the patient has been hopeless to continue um, the current pregnancy due to recurrent miscarriage in the past, is there indication of TOP on the side of ONG opinion? First of all, the topic recurrent miscarriage itself is a tricky. Sometimes it is a single cause causing the uh, recurrent miscarriage. Sometimes it is multiple contributors. The woman may have the infections or cervical incompetence or any medical comorbidity affecting the viability of the pregnancy. So, but if you compare with the general populations, obviously the patient with the uterine anomaly, they have high risk for miscarriage and as well as the early preterm delivery. Okay, but not all the cases they have miscarriage or the preterm delivery. Not all, because I have witnessed my colleague, one of my colleagues with uterine anomaly, she is having the light birth, okay, term, full term pregnancy. So it's, you have to decide, uh, like Prohamiza mentioned, case to case basic, okay. Is this her uterine anomaly the sole cause for the re recurrent miscarriage? So even if it is the sole cause, you have to see the current situations in this current pregnancy. So if it is endangering the life of the mother, no, no reason for TOP. If it is endangering the life of the fetus, no, if there is no, no reason for TOP. And um, but you have to see the situation as a whole. Okay, and you try anomaly sahaja. So you have to screen for the uh, bacteria 
infection such as a bacterial vaginosis girl or she has any uh, other medical problem like such as um, uh, uh, Bernie, this, the case is the first trimester or second trimester, Miss Kerridge? Um, the question is second trimester. Okay, cervical incompetence girl, or any other intrauterine infections, girl, you can rule out those things. We cannot just play that you try and uh, continue you try and normally. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you, Dr. Famida. Uh, a question from uh, Prof. Abdul Razak. Um, is it acceptable to terminate a pregnancy if it is for men mental instability if like if the patient has a suicidal ideation um she is very depressed is it is it uh, permissible and acceptable mm. okay this is one of the issues that has been discussed and summarized in in this book by our scholar and also so the Fukaha discuss it not only now, but also the classical, uh, not only the modern jurist, but also the classical Fukaha discuss. So this is the dilemma they have. This is the dilemma they have. Look, when we talk about mental, you know, distress or mental, you know, problems, is mental problems something that is life-threatening or it is something that you know, yes, this individual have a mental problem and therefore, yeah, there are risks, you know, they can make, they can, you know, harm, they can commit suicide. In other words, they can make, uh, what do you call, they can act, right? But is it something that is threatening their life? Can somebody live with mental problems? Of course, uh, this is the answer we want from the medical doctors. Because in Islam, when, when they say that, if the mother's life is at risk, then you can proceed with the termination of pregnancy. At risk here, as Dr. Famida mentioned, they mentioned the word any. Now, I think in Australian imams there, is very general, very wide, and need to be you know, specified. Here, the ulama normally take that word as a life threatening, for example, healthy wise. Whereby if she continues without pregnancy, her life may be at risk. So I have not seen any ulama who have said that risk, life risk means mental, I mean like intellect risk. You know, how, how, you know, is this risk a life risk or something that risk is the aql? So yes, in Islam, aql protection, you know, hifdul aql, hifdul nafs, hifdul mal, right? So we have five things to be protected. So now we take the termination of pregnancy because we want to preserve life. Okay. Now, if we want to terminate pregnancy because of hifdul aql, is hifdul aql, you know, risk to hifdul nafs? This is the challenge that the fuqaha have, you know, because, because they, will, they will bring you back, they will ask you back, is mental, difficult going to lead death of the person? Let us say the mother. That is the question they ask you back. But if let us say the life of the mother is at risk, if she continue with that pregnancy, means her life will come to an end. Then they will say, yes, now we have to choose between two evils, to save the mother's life or to save the baby's life. So they say, now we commit lesser harm, fine. But now if you say, wait a minute, you know what? Now we have to be, we have to protect the mind of the mother. Therefore, we have to terminate the baby. The jurists, they have difficulty with that. They will bring you back the issue. This is the dilemma they have. They will ask the medical doctors. Yes. Okay, okay. Understood, uh, Prof. Abdurraza. There is another question to Prof um, about regarding how do we manage the product of conception or fetus after delivery and at what gestation uh, the cut off point should we manage them like adult meaning uh, adult muslim again, again, one more time, one more time. so how how do we uh, manage the product of conception um uh, and at what gestation the cut off point should we manage them as 
an adult bu burial. Oh, okay, okay. Is that for me or for Dr. Tamida? I think either. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tamida, I think she's somebody called Dr. Lena Stark. Famida, can Sorry, you Dr. answer Nawani. this? Uh, at the moment, I don't have any answer to your questions. I'm also exploring, but I found a link. I found a link regarding your questions. Let me share in the chat box. But I think I need time not to go through what they are, they had been discussing on these issues. Mm. Generally, what I know is, you know, every part of human product, I can say the, the pregnancy, the product of pregnancy deserves to be, you know, honored, put in that way. So as long as these, you know, vitalized ovum is actually something that is, con you know, congealed blood or connected or, you know, how do I say, you know, formed, then of course the ulama will tell you we have to protect it. Also myself, I don't have a specific answer, but I still remember questions when they, but when it comes to insolvent, of course the, the, the respect grows more. So the, 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 I do not, to be honest, I do not have a specific answer for that, where the kafan, the janaza, all this one, you know, Muslim burial would be given to. But what I remember is the ulama always say that, you know, every part of the pregnancy has to be. Offline is not stable. Okay. Um, from uh, it's already 9:45 a.m. So from this session, uh, I would like to conclude that um, aborting a fetus is not permissible or haram unless there is a necessity for it. So from medical point of view, uh, it should be individualized depending on the any obvious fetal abnormality or if there is any known cure or the mother health is in danger. So we have to um, discuss it with our is Islamic scholar regarding this, uh, if you need for a termination of pregnancy. So I would like to um, share Surah Al-Imran, Ayat 159. So when we have made a decision, then put your trust in Allah. So I guess from medical assessment and consultation with the Islamic scholar, if it is a necessity for termination of pregnancy, uh, for maternal health, um, when you decide it, so you have to put your trust in Allah. So do you, uh, so it's already 9.45. I need to draw the CPC, uh, ICPC session to an end. Thank you to both our speakers uh, for an enlightening talk. Okay, I guess the participant- Dr. Khairun Nisa, uh, before, yeah. Sorry? Dr. Khairun Nisa, before you conclude, I, I would like to say one final word. Okay. Because just now I was concluding the question that you asked and then I think the, 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 the network wasn't good. I don't have a specific answer when the janaza, you know, and kafan would be offered to the growing, you know, I mean, terminated, you know, product of the pregnancy. But generally, I know that right from the beginning of the pregnancy up to the end, Muslim scholars always advise, you know, those who are handling those kind of, you know, product to be careful, honor it, and then uh, manage it well, because this is the, you know, what do you call an honored, you know, product. So that is a general overview. And later on, inshallah, I will get the right answers and I will send it to the relevant, you know, links and share, inshallah, in the kulia. But number two, this is my second conclusion. My second conclusion is as a co-organizer for ICBC, maybe Dr. Shayful, I think is there. I would like to advise because you can see now the problem we have, the problem we have with the network. 
I see this now the COVID-19 is over, inshallah, we wouldn't, wouldn't be around anymore. Can we go back to our face-to-face -face, you know, sessions so that we can avoid this challenge of network problems? Yes, Prof, I will request. discuss it. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay, uh, thank you Shukran. Shukran. to both our speakers for the enlightening talk. Okay, so we end our session with Tasbih Kifara and Surah Aas. Okay, thank you all.